waveform here. So if you see the waveform, one thing that you are noting is they are decreasing serially. So they are actually decreasing. But as I told you, it will be very difficult to note unless and until you have a trend. The next one, you can see the waveform here. So if you see the waveform, one thing that you are noting is they are decreasing serially. So they are actually decreasing. But as I told you, it will be very difficult to note unless and until you have a trend. So you can see here, I have intentionally put an image that shows a decreasing ETCO2 waveform. But you know, like in real time, it's very difficult to find out. Sometimes the changes may be very subtle. That's why we have the trend here. You can see the trend is clearly showing. We, these are compressed waveforms that actually the ETCO2 is decreasing over a period of time. So this is one another example. So you can see this here. What I'm trying to show is the ETCO2 is actually increasing here. But this image again is an intentional depiction of that ETCO2 is increasing. But sometimes these subtle changes you may not be able to pick up. So that is why we have the trend where you can see the ETCO2 is actually gradually increasing. So now let me tell you what are the conditions that will that will produce this reduced ETCO2. Either progressively reducing or reduced to a small level. So what are the conditions? Number one, obviously hyperventilation in the sense whenever you have an increased heart rate sorry yeah hyperventilation whenever you have an increased heart rate you are going to have a decreased ETCO2 only because they obviously you know like hypoventilation you will have more CO2 elimination hyperventilation you will have reduced CO2 elimination number two second whenever you have a reduced metabolism. So there are three things that is going to affect I told you. One is circulation, metabolism and ventilation. So second is reduced metabolism. What are the conditions that produce reduced metabolism? I can tell hypothermia, right? Mixed edema sometimes in severe hypothyroidism. So these are some of the examples where by reduced metabolism may cause reduced ETCO2. Number three, reduced circulation or I can write condition that produce reduced perfusion like pulmonary embolism, cardiogenic shock, cardiac arrest or probably even uh, we talked about that uh, increased intraalar pressure causing high PEEP and very high level of positive pressure ventilation. All these things can produce reduced circulation because of the tumor result in low ETCO2. Clear? So remember this low circulation causes producing low ETCO2 will definitely increase the ETCO2 and PACO2 gradient, that value will also be increased. Fine. So what are the conditions that generally produce this kind of increased ETCO2? Increased ETCO2. What are the conditions that produce increased ETCO2? Remember this increased ETCO2 can be produced by obviously hypoventilation classically due to reduced respiratory rate. Remember, there is something called a hypopnic hypoventilation. We are not talking about that. We are typically talking about a bradypneic hypoventilation. So definitely, because of reduced respiratory rate, your amount of CO2 excreted by each breath will start increasing. Number two, hypermetabolism. What are the conditions? Fever. Clear? Number one. Number two, malignant hyperthermia. Malignant hyperthermia. Sometimes after an exercise, if you do see ETCO2, obviously exercise is a condition that generates a lot of carbon dioxide and it's a hypermetabolic state. And number four, you can think about hyperthyroidism also in exceptional rare cases. But I always believe exam will be based on this only. That is your malignant hyperthermia. Very important. Malignant hyperthermia, the values may reach as high as 55, 60 and all. So you have to be careful. Intraoperatively, if you reach that 55, 60 and you have a history of uh, succinyl choline given to the patient, you can think about malignant hyperthermia. And number three, apart from this uh, hypermetabolism, you have increased perfusion. 
so when you can have increased perfusion to the lungs especially when you are going to have a uh, exercise so that is one example where you can have a high perfusion apart from that these are the two causes but remember hyperventilation causing high etco2 is not always the norm why because hyperventilation may result in lot of other uh, kind of waves also so for example if you see here this is the characteristic type 1 hyperventilation that is referred to as a bradypneic hyperventilation Bradyp bradypneic means you have a low respiratory rate that is a type 1 hyperventilation where you can see progressively the waveforms will increase because of the reduced respiratory rate the CO2 elimination per breath will increase so that is why the ETCO2 looks as if they are increased but there is a second type called a type 2 otherwise referred to as hypopnic hyperventilation where the problem here is low tidal volume whenever there is low tidal volume means per breath how much CO2 they will eliminate will be low only because the tidal volume will be very very low due to some neuromuscular damage so once again please do remember that uh, here the respiratory rate can be normal or decreased or even increased so respiratory rate does not matter here. here here the tidal volume is low so that is why in this type of hypoventilation type 2 hypopnic hyperventilation the height of ETCO2 will be reduced only so very careful be very careful about that and this kind of hypopnic hyperventilation can happen if the patient is on excessive sedation like excessive ketamine so that can also result in this hypopnic hyperventilation during a surgery or critical care so this is the third type of hyperventilation where you can see there is a low tidal volume that is the reason why you are having small breath a very small etco2 curve baseline and at the same time you can see there are periods of apnea so this is one period of apnea and again there are periods of regular breathing also so which means this is a hypoventilation obviously it is of hypopnic and respiratory rate is also low and bradypneic also so totally I can tell this is a hypoventilation with periodic breathing with periodic breathing remember usually this type 1 hypoventilation and this hypoventilation with periodic breathing will be due to central cause most of the time that is the brain cause but this hypopnic hypoventilation that is type 2 hypoventilation is usually due to neuromuscular paralysis or neuromuscular weakness or excessive sedation during anesthesia so these are some of the reasons why you get this kind of hyperventilation remember hyperventilation is not just hyperventilation what you see but in exam hyperventilation means high etco2 hyperventilation means low etco2 that's it fine so now we have seen the trend also so i showed you the trend as well already you are fine 